chains I'm up Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. That's my favorite part right here. Amen. But
convention like a, I don't know, a couple of months ago. Uh, it's just a big camping deal. I, I like to camp. And I like to fish and hunt and do all that good stuff. But uh, I was just walking around. I was by myself over in uh, Missouri and uh, just walking through, looking at you know how vendors set up and they do all these things. You know, you just walk around and look at all their stuff. This guy comes up to me, young guy. I mean, probably 23, 24. Uh, baseball hat, good looking kid. He just walks up to me and says, "Hey, what are you about?" And I'm. I've never been asked that before, you know, just like, hello, nice to meet you, my name's Chad, whatever. But this guy just walks up in, this, in the middle of this big convention and says, what are you about? I was like, well, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm about being a dad and a husband. And uh, I said, man, I said, that, he sort of caught me off guard with that. What, what you, why'd you ask that? And he said, uh, I want to tell you what I'm about. And I was like, well, go ahead. And he's like, man, I'm about Jesus Christ. And I just looked at him. I really didn't want to talk to him. I was looking at this part from my Jeep, and, and it, was, it was cool. But the uh, but I just I turned to him and uh, I said, "Man, that's that's a uh, interesting way to start that conversation off." And he said, "Are you a Christian?" And I said, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah, man, I'm a Christian." And he said, "Well, I'm about to start uh, Bible college, and uh, man, I came here with my buddy, and I was just setting up, and I've just sitting been sitting here for two days, wasting my time." He said, watching people looking around, you know, people coming up, looking at these parts and pieces and all. And he said, man, when I saw you walk by, I just thought I needed to, to stop wasting my time and see if you knew Christ or not. And I was like, man, that, like, I got chills right now because, you know, sometimes that'll get on your nerves just a little bit. Maybe it's just me. But the, uh, <laughs> the, but the way he did it was so tasteful. And, and then he said, I decided to make a stand. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, I'm, he said, I'm starting right now to make a stand. And I ain't, I'm, I'm not going to beat him over the head with my Bible. But he said, man, if I see somebody that I need to talk to, then that's my stand. And that's what I'm going to talk to him about. So, and uh, so I left. I was camping over there at this little place. And I got back to my camp. And I was, that was just on my mind the whole time I was sitting over there. And... Uh, Man, about two months, two, three months ago is when I finally decided to make my stand too after that guy said something. And uh, I, want, I love this church. I love the people at this church. Uh, I was gone for a minute, and now we're back, and uh, we're doing our thing. And uh, I want to thank you for everybody that's, I want to thank everybody that's serving, everybody who's praying about serving. And uh, maybe, you, maybe it's time to make your stand also.
So what could I say? And what could I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely. six weeks ago. I, maybe a couple people, right? <laughs> she got notes. Without notes, right? It's good that you're taking notes, right? Not very many. Not very many. Truth is, I've got notes all through my Bible too, you know. If I open the Bible up and, you know, I'll look, oh yeah, that pastor preached that message on this day and I took some notes and, and things along those lines. You know, if you, if you just off the top of your head with no notes, somebody asks you what was the sermon about five, six weeks ago, you're probably not going to be able to tell. But if somebody said, tell me what Jesus has done in your life, you'll be able to, to speak some things out of your mouth right off the bat, right? Okay? And, and, and that's awesome. Because what we do here is not about me. And it's not about the praise man, and it's not about any, it is about Jesus. What is Jesus doing? We went to the deacons meeting for the Gibson Baptist Association, and uh, it, it was, you know, full disclosure, full transparency. I went because I kind of felt like I had an obligation to go. If I could just be real honest, okay? I went because I wanted to represent the church, you know, it, it was it was something I felt like we needed to go to. So I went out of obligation. And man, was I blessed. I was so blessed. The preacher preached a sermon. The, the worship was good, but the preacher preached a sermon that was just for me. And it was such an awesome service, right? We, we had some things that went. It was such an awesome service. And it was just for me. It helped me to understand that it's not about what I do. It's not about what I particularly say. It doesn't have anything really to do with me. It's about Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. I praise God for Jesus and what Jesus has done. We sang about an old rugged cross. He went there with you on his mind. Praise God. It's about Jesus. It's not about me. I pray that I can get out of the way long enough. And I pray that I can get behind the word of God and get behind the cross and let him use me to preach Jesus into this place. It's not about what I do. It's about Jesus. I'm saved by the blood of Christ today. I'm going to heaven when it's all said and done. I'm going. Do you know him today? Because all the things that we do at Chapel Hill Baptist Church, the most important thing that we do at this church is to preach the gospel and to share Jesus with everybody we come in contact with. Because there's a place called heaven prepared for us. He wants everybody to go. He doesn't want anybody to miss out. It's up to us to, to tell people about Jesus and what he's done. Do you believe that Jesus walked on the water? Say amen if you believe Jesus walked on the water. And he walked on the water. Praise God. I praise God that we serve a Savior that walked on the water. He not only walked on the water, but he calmed the storms. And he said, calm, be still. And the waves and the wind, they obeyed him. Right? It's about Jesus. That Jesus. That Jesus that said, Lazarus, come up out of the grave. Even though you've been there four days, come out of the grave. And, and, and Lazarus walks out of the grave. At the sound of Jesus' birth, a voice called him out there. That Jesus. That's the Jesus we're talking about. The Jesus that made people that couldn't speak, speak. The Jesus that made people that could not walk, walk. 
the, the Jesus that made the blind man see, that Jesus is the Jesus that we're talking about. Do you know him today? Do you have a personal relationship with him today? Have you confessed him as your Lord and Savior? If you have not, I pray in the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, the powerful name of Jesus, that you will allow him to save your soul today. He loves you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. He went to that old rugged cross that we sang about just for you. And I pray Holy Spirit makes you aware of the fact that you need him today. Because we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus. But Holy Spirit is one of the calls. Amen. So I pray right now that Holy Spirit begins to call and Holy Spirit begins to convict the person that doesn't have a relationship with. Maybe many people. I don't know what your relationship is with him, but I know this. He loves you. He loves you enough to go to Calvary for you. And he wants to have a personal relationship with you. And it is about Jesus, not about you, and not about me. It's about Jesus and Jesus only. I pray that all we do at Chapel Hill Baptist Church points people toward the cross of Jesus so that they can know him and so that they can have a relationship with him like I have. Now, I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. I fall short of the glory of God, just like everybody else does. But I know him. I have a personal relationship with him. I'm forgiven. I'm going to heaven when it's all said and done. And I pray that you have that too. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus, I pray that you would allow him to save your soul today. It is about Jesus and Jesus only. And I pray all that we do here at Chapel Hill Baptist Church points people to Jesus away from me and to him. Amen. That's my prayer. If you can and you would, please stand as we read the word of God. It's not about me. It's about Jesus, not me or you. Acts chapter number two, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. Verse 46. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Lord, thank you so much for your word. God, I thank you for adding to the church daily. Lord, I thank you for the work of the apostles that we read about in Acts chapter 2. Lord, I thank you for Peter that's willing to stand up and, and preach the word of God and and. and Thousands of people came to know you. I thank you for that day. And God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus and through the power of Holy Spirit that you would help me to preach the word of God the way that you would have me to preach it. Lord, help me to preach only what you would have me to preach. I've got a plan. I, I feel like I know what you want me to preach, but you fill my mouth up. Lord, fill my mouth up with the words that your people need to hear today. And I pray for Holy Spirit to convict. And I pray for hearts and minds to be open to that conviction. And Lord, I pray believing that souls will be saved today, right here at Chapel Hill Baptist Church. And God, it is about you, not us. I love you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So it's about Jesus, not me or you. It's about Jesus, not me or you. So how do we live that kind of life? Because that's hard, right? It's hard to live a life because it's about Jesus, not me. It's hard to live a life to where you, you, you make everything about Jesus and nothing about us. It's hard because people uh, live life and they get credit for things. Hey, all right. I'm just going to leave it laying right there. That wasn't a, a mic drop, by the way. But hey, you can mic drop when you speak the name of Jesus. Jesus. Boom, mic drop. Right? You can do that. Okay? That, that, that's worthy of a drop mic, of, of a mic drop. But what I'm saying is, it's hard to make everything about Jesus. It's hard to live life, just everything about Jesus and only the name of Jesus. So some things that can help us, Jesus wants us to be committed to the Word. If I'm going to live a life 
that is about Jesus. If I'm going to live a life where I'm going to get behind the cross and all that I do reflects him and, I, and all that comes out of my mouth gives glory to him, I've got to be a, a, a Christian that is in the word of God. I can't do it. By, if I get out of the word of God, I start making everything about me and I start feeling selfish and I start thinking about what I'm doing. But if I'm in the word, if we're going to live our life in a way that makes everything about Jesus and not about us, it starts right here. The powerful, infallible, magnificent, holy word of God. Everything in here is the word of God. It is God's word written by men, inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's in there. So if I'm going to live my life in a way that makes it about Jesus and not about me, I've got to be in the word. I've got to be, I've got to be teaching others about the word. Here's what we have at Chapel Baptist Church right now. We have teachers committed to teaching the word of God. That helps all of us, right? So if I'm going to be an individual that's going to make everything about Jesus, then I need to be in the word. If my family is going to be a family that's going to make everything about Jesus, then I need to be in the word. If we're going to be a church, a chapel Baptist church that makes everything about Jesus and not about us, we need teachers committed to teaching the Word of God. And we have teachers committed to teaching the Word of God. Praise God for Sunday school. Amen. Praise God for Wednesday night. Right now, we have children in the back that are being taught by teachers that are teaching the Word of God. They're committed to it. They're speaking the name of Jesus into our children in the back right now. Teachers committed to teaching the Word of God. Preachers committed to preaching the Word of God. I pray in the name of Jesus. And through the power of his spirit, that every time the church doors are open and the pulpit is occupied, that we will have a preacher that gets the word of God out and preaches the word of God to his people. It's the only way when you are preaching, you get the word of God out and you preach the word of God. We need preachers, not just in our church, but across this nation. We need preachers. Committed to preaching the word of God. We have people dying, lost, going to hell without Jesus. And we got preachers in this world that we're living in right now that don't get the word of God out and preach the word. Meanwhile, souls are perishing and people are dying and going to hell. And we've got preachers that won't preach the word of God. It is the word of God. If we're going to make it all about Jesus, then we need to have preachers committed to preaching the word of God. Believers committed to sharing the word of God. Amen. Look, we're talking about making it all about Jesus. Not about me. Not about you. Right? It's about Jesus. So are you, as a believer, are you committed to sharing the word of God? Because as we share the word of God, people see Jesus in us, right? As we talk with people and we, we bring up the scripture and we introduce scripture into a conversation, then all of a sudden it's not about us anymore. It's about the word of God because there's power in the word of God. The spoken word of God. There's power in the word of God. It's never going to come back void. Now we, we know that a lot when we start talking about preaching from the pulpit. It doesn't change when you as a believer start speaking the word of God into the lives of people. It's not going to come back void. God is going to use that, right? So we need believers committed to sharing the word of God. We need believers committed to reading the word of God. As Christians, if we're ever going to live a life that makes it about Jesus and not about me and not about you, it starts with the word of God. Jesus wants us to be committed to fellowship with others. It's a beautiful thing. Fellowship with others. If we are going to live our life in a way that reflects Jesus and everybody that comes in contact with us, families, individuals, everybody that comes in contact with our church, gets the idea that it's about Jesus, man. It's not about us. Then what we have to do is we have to understand and be committed to fellowship. Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread. If you're not in a Sunday school class, I highly encourage you to get in a Sunday school class. Well, why, Brother Keith? Because it encourages you and it helps you. It will help you to make it more about Jesus and less about you. Right? Get in a Sunday school class. If you're not in a Sunday school class, please see one of us. See me, see Brother Mike, see Lori, see any of our deacons. 
we'll point you to a Sunday school class, man. Sunday school is awesome. It is, to me, the most favorite time of the day when we come and worship is Sunday school. I love Sunday school. Committed to fellowship with one another. Sunday school, worship, Bible study. Wednesday night, if you're not coming on Wednesday night, you are missing out, okay? You're missing out on Wednesday night. And again, it's not about us. It's not about me. I don't say this to you. So you say, oh, yeah, Brother Keith, Wednesday night. That's not what I mean at all. What I'm saying is the name of Jesus is lifted up on a Wednesday night in our in our gym. And it is all about Jesus. And then it helps us to be rejuvenated and go out and make it all about Jesus. Come to church Wednesday night. We got a great meal. Starts at 515. Bible study follows. And we got classes for everybody. Make it about Jesus relationships, service opportunities, sitting on the front porch. Who likes to sit on the front porch? Back porch? Okay, all right. We've got some back, back porch sitters, okay? I understand. You sit on the back porch with somebody, you get to know them, right? You sit on the front porch with somebody, you get to know them. You sit on that porch, you have a relationship with that person. It's all about Jesus. Amen. You can speak scripture. You can pray. You spend time with that person. If we're going to make it about Jesus, we need to take some time to sit on the back porch. Amen? Ooh, I'm preaching to myself. I had a busy week. I need, I need to take a break and sit on the back porch, Mike. I'm going to do that this afternoon. <laughs> Prayer. If we're going to live our life in a way that makes it all about Jesus and not about us, then we need to be committed to prayer. 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine of fellowship, in the breaking of bread and prayers. Are you praying for souls to be saved? If we're going to make it all about Jesus, then what we need to be doing is we need to be a praying person. Individually, are you praying for souls to be saved? As a family, is your family praying about souls and how they can, how the Lord can use your family to reach somebody? As a church, are we praying collectively for souls to be per, to, to be saved? I pray in the name of Jesus that souls are saved. As we pray for souls to be saved, what we do is we begin to make it about Jesus, not about us, right? We're praying, Lord, please save souls. I pray in the name of Jesus that he will raise up soul winners out of Chapel Baptist Church. People that are soul sensitive. People that know and understand. Every time I walk by somebody on this planet, you are walking by a soul that has a etern an eternal destiny somewhere. Soul sensitive. Soul winners are sensitive. They're soul sensitive. They understand. I'm not talking to a person in a Walmart line. I'm talking to a soul that has an eternal destination in either heaven or hell. Are they saved? Brother Chad, I love you. The guy that came up to you. What are you all about? Taking a stand. If the lost people that you know, and a couple weeks ago we asked everybody to raise your hand if you know lost people. Everybody did. If the lost people that you know if you knew that today was their last day here on this earth before they passed away, would you go talk to them about Jesus? Would you? It could be. Do you understand that? Life is so fragile. It's a vapor. It could be. We're not guaranteed another second. So are we praying for souls to be saved? Are we praying for lives to be changed? Are we praying for the sick to be healed? Are we praying for the weak to be made strong? Are, are we praying for believers to be messengers in this world? Are we praying for families to make Jesus the cornerstone of their families? Are we praying? Because as we pray, we make it about him. We take it off of us and we make it about him. It's about Jesus. It's not about me. And it's not about you. It is about Jesus. Jesus wants us to understand if we will be committed, he'll use us. If we will commit to live a life that makes it about him, not about us, and we take us out of it, and it's hard, and I know it's hard to take us out of it, but if we will do that, if we will commit to making everything that we do about Jesus, he'll use that. He will use it. 
Verse 43. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Jesus will use us if we make it about him. He will use us if we make it about him. He will use us to minister to the sick. He will use us to speak Jesus into the lives of those who need him. He will use us to love those who view themselves as unlovable. I don't know about you guys, but there's been times in my life where I felt unlovable. Where I have blown us. Look, I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. Just like y'all. We all sin and fall short. I'm a sinner. And there's been times in my life where I have sinned and I have fallen short and I've got myself to a point where I just felt as if I was unlovable. Not only, I mean, I got myself to a point where I felt like I, there's nobody on this planet that would love me in the condition that I'm in right now. Right? But if, if we will commit to living our life for Jesus and make it about him, what we'll do is we'll go and love that person that is unlovable. We'll be able to put our arms around that person that probably hasn't had a hug and who knows when. We'll be able to sit and talk with people that nobody else is talking to. Why? Because it's about Jesus. It's not about me. Are you willing to be seen with the most unlovable person in our community? Let that sink in just for a second. Are you willing to be seen in public with the person in our community that is the most unlovable person in our community? Tough. I mean, we can say, we're in church. Oh yeah, bro, Keith, I'm willing, right? Then all of a sudden, rubber meets the road and I've got an opportunity to, to maybe be seen with somebody that might not be so lovable. I start looking around a little bit. Right? Because that's the flesh. The flesh gets involved. Then it's about us. Then it's not about Jesus anymore. Now it's about somebody seeing me with this person. And that's just one example. When you see what I'm saying? Are we willing to make it about Jesus? Are we willing to love down level? I praise God that my Savior Jesus went to a cross at Calvary and, and gave his life there for me, the unlovable. Because I was unlovable. I had put myself, before I got saved, I had put myself in a situation where nobody should have loved me. I was in such a dark spot. Nobody should have loved I wasn't worthy of love. I wasn't worthy of anybody wanting to, to, to minister to me. I wasn't worthy of any of that. But my Savior Jesus, even while I was a sinner, Christ died for me. Praise God. Died for me. Loving the unlovable. Show grace to those who feel as if they are not deserving of grace. Grace. Marvelous grace. Praise God. If we're going to live a life that makes Jesus more important than us, we got to understand grace. Okay? Grace, unmerited faith. Like I said, I was a lie, I didn't deserve it. Christ gave me grace, right? So it's easy for us if we will get to a point and allow Holy Spirit to convict us, it's easy for us to receive grace. I praise God, Holy Spirit convicted me of my sins and I gave my life to him. Third week of January, 1997, in Newport News, Virginia. I praise God that I gave my life to him. I received grace. It was a free gift. Didn't have to do anything. Couldn't do anything anyway to earn it. Didn't have to do it. I just received grace. We're good at receiving grace. If we're going to live our life like Jesus, making about him and not us, we got to be good at giving it. we got to be good at giving grace. Because guess what? Just because I'm saved don't make me perfect. And sometimes I say things I'm not supposed to say. And I need some grace. I need for you to give me some grace today, okay? I may say something I'm not supposed to say. I pray that the Lord Jesus would shut my mouth. I would never say anything, especially in the pulpit, but anywhere that I shouldn't say. But I'm going to. I'm a sinner just like you, and sometimes I mess it up. 
And sometimes I need some grace. I know the Lord gives me grace, but will you give me grace? Will you hand out grace to a brother that's sitting across the aisle right now? Will you hand out some grace to a sister that's sitting across the aisle right now? Will you hand out some grace to somebody that has said something hurt your feelings? Will you give out some grace to somebody that has mistreated you? Will you give out some grace to somebody that fill in the blank? Will you hand out some grace? Who am I to withhold grace from somebody that has sinned against me? My Savior Jesus, grace sufficient. He gives grace to me. I can never mess it up too bad. I can never go too far. So I receive grace. I try to, not to do things that, that makes me need it. But when I need it, he gives it to me. I can't withhold grace from people. If I'm going to make it about Jesus, I've got to be like him. And I've got to hand out grace. Look, people are going to say things hurt your feelings. Happens all the time. Right? Happens all the time. People are going to do things to make you mad. Happens all the time. Look, I got mad the other day. I was like, that person right there, they've lost their mind. I don't know who they are that they think that they can say that to me. Who do, who do you think you are, right? And, and I'm thinking, I, I just need to get away from that person, right? Guess what? Grace. Grace. Are we handing it out as freely as we are receiving? If we're going to be like Jesus, damn it, we receive grace, but we hand it out. Because look, people are sinners. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. It's about Jesus, not me. Jesus wants us to be committed to one another and committed to this good church that we're all sitting in. Verse 44. Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common. Believers have so much in common. that we're not going to agree on everything. Amen? You say it, man. Amen? Amen? Not going to agree on everything. We're just not. We're not going to agree on every single thing that takes place in the Lord's house. Right? We're not all going to agree on how we administrate every single part of the church that the Lord has blessed us with to administrate. We're going to disagree. It's just going to happen because people have different ideas. That's why we have committees made up of different types of people and different ages and, and all that so that we can get every opinion. People are going to disagree. Okay? It's just the way it is. People disagree. But there's common ground. Here's some common ground. We all believe that Jesus is who he says he is. Amen. Everybody say the name of Jesus. Jesus. We have that common Right? We have that common. We know that Jesus is who he says he is. We know that Jesus is who he says he is. We have that in common. We know Jesus loves us in spite of us. We can believe, we can agree on that. We know that we are saved by grace through faith. We know he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. We know that we are saved by him. And there's no other way to be saved. We agree on that. And then, then we make it all about Jesus and not about us. And, and we say, Lord, it is about you. We agree on those things. Then on the things that we disagree on, we can find some common ground. I pray in the name of Jesus that we make it about him and not about us. Common ground. Jesus teaches us we should be committed to what is best for all of us, not what is best for us. What is best for all of us, not what is best for ourselves. Verse 44. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone who had need, they sacrificed by selling the goods and possessions. <coughs> I got what Chad had. You know what I got? <coughs> I got grass in my throat because I mowed my own grass the other day. That's what I got. Thank you, Kevin. 
selling their goods and possessions. They divided them among themselves, and they provided for the needs of many. Jesus teaches us we should be committed to what is best for everybody, not what's best for me. Okay? Now, the disciples here, they, 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 they were a different level. Okay? The early church... I mean, those disciples, they were on a completely different level. I mean, they're selling everything they own. They're, they're, they're dropping everything. They're, they're selling everything, putting the money together. They're taking care of each other. And it was just a different level. But what we can do as a church body to make it all about Jesus and not about us is that we can minister and love each other regardless of our differences, right? Praise God. It's awesome. So what we need to do is we need to make it about Jesus and not about us. Jesus teaches us the beauty of unity. Verse 46. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. One accord. There was gladness, and things were not hard. If we are going to make it all about Jesus and not about us, as an individual, what I got to do is, is I just have to come to grips with myself and understand that I am not as important as Jesus is. Jesus is all that matters, right? got to be committed to some things are we it's so beautiful how the church came together in unity and then we're going to give an invitation i see chad sitting on every edge of seat we're going to give an invitation right now in a minute they were together in in unity right what is your personal relationship with jesus that's the question we all need to answer okay what is your personal relationship with him? Do you know him? Are you saved? Do you have a personal relationship with him? And if you do, are you living your life in a way to where anybody who comes into contact with you would know that your life is about Jesus and not about you? Right? So you may be here today and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm, we're going to give an invitation. We're going to ask you to come. Why? Because he loves you. Why? Because he gave his life for you. Why should you come and give your life to him? Because he gave his life for you so that you could cross from death to life. He loves you. Look, grace, you haven't gone too far. There's nothing you could have done. There's nothing you can ever do that's going to change how much he loves you. He loves you. It's grace. It's free. Come and receive some grace. Maybe you're here today and you need to give some grace. Not only receive grace, but maybe you need to give some grace. Maybe you, you, have, you have a relationship that, that, that is not where it needs to be. And you need to, to maybe give some grace in that relationship. And maybe you need to talk to the Lord and get that relationship right. Because it's hard to give grace. It is difficult to hand out grace. Even though God gives it to us freely, it's hard for us to give it. Maybe you need to come and, and, and do some business with the Lord to where you can hand out some grace this morning. And it is so awesome in Acts chapter 2, verse 46 and 47, when they start talking about the church. They were together in unity. And here's the word that the scripture used. It was simple. Simplicity. It was simple. Right? It was so simple. God's people make it everything about Jesus and not about them. And the church live together in unity and in simplicity shouldn't be hard to have church right i praise god for this church y'all chapel hill baptist church and i believe with all my heart that we have one of the best churches in the state of tennessee you're not going to be able to convince me otherwise look i have seen god's people I have seen how God's people are standing in gaps that need to be stood in. I have seen how God's people have gathered around folks and laid hands on and prayed over folks. I've seen that. You can't tell me that this is not a good church. It's an awesome church. Maybe you're here today and you want to join this church. 
We're going to give an invitation. You come join. Right? If you haven't gone through the class yet, we'll get you through that. Just, just come join. It's a good church. Come be a part of it. Maybe you need to be baptized. But most importantly, maybe your relationship with Jesus is not where it needs to be. Maybe you're, you're a Christian. You know you're a Christian. You're a believer. You need to come receive some grace today. Come and receive some grace. Maybe you're here and you've never confessed Christ as your Lord. Will you do that today? I plead with you to not get up and walk out of this church building right now if you have never confessed Christ as your Lord. He loves you. There's grace for you. He wants you to be saved today. Please allow the Lord to save your soul today. Don't leave. Allow him to save you today if you've never asked him to come into your heart, if you've never confessed him as Lord. Let today be the day that salvation comes to the house of the Lord. Let today be the day when relationships are healed. Let today be the day when I receive and give grace.